is an eyewitness testimony from Simon of Syrian. Shu, long way, several weeks' journey from Cyrene in North Africa. My young boys, Rufus and Alexander, I am Simon. This is the gist of my story of meeting Jesus. We've come to Jerusalem. We can almost see the temple, God's home, our heart's home for Passover. We're coming close to the city now, but wait. The road is blocked by so many people. This is to be expected for the festival, but this procession, it's moving out and away from the city. What? Oh no, the Romans, those soldiers, so rude and foul of speech. It's a criminal execution day, a prisoner's procession. Oh, I don't want my sons to see this. Wait, what are people saying? They're speaking about Jesus. I have heard of him, a great young rabbi of our faith, so popular and yet so not religious. He speaks as if directly from God, but the religious leaders hate him. Wait, what? Jesus in this procession? What does that mean? Yes, it's him. I see him, and though I've never laid eyes on him before, I know that it's him. There's something about him, a tragic figure, a guiltless man, yet treated this way? Just then, I was so lost in my thoughts, watching Jesus fall under the cross. I didn't hear it at first. Someone was shouting, you. I say you there. Yes, you. You'll do just fine. You're young and fit. Get out of the crowd and carry this man's cross. What? Me? I'm just a bystander. I'm not part of this procession. The Romans don't suffer excuses. I was made to fall in line and take up the cross. As I did, he looked at me. Jesus' eyes caught mine. He was down in the dirt as I lifted the beam from his back. He looked at me, and it was all compassion. Those eyes, no criminal could have eyes like that, no guilt or shame, only love and compassion. I was struck by the look in his eyes, and I'll never forget it. So there I was, in the midst of the actions. Boys, follow along. It's only a five-minute walk from here to the hill, Calvary. We were there when they crucified him. I dropped the heavy beam. I didn't want to see what they were about to do, but I couldn't look away. Nails driven, cries of anguish, three prisoners, no, Two thieves and one guiltless man. Rufus had his face in his hands, in tears. Alexander got sick to his stomach. But we couldn't leave. He looked at me. We watched and waited. Long hours of anguish and sorrow. Yet he spoke. Jesus spoke as hard as it was to get his breath. Then, as it seemed he was breathing his last, someone cried out, Hush, shh, everyone. He sang something. Father, forgive. What did he say? I turned to my boys for confirmation. Yes, he said, forgive. A dying man put to death by the state for treason. Any ordinary man would be spitting out words of blame for others, anger or hatred towards his accusers, or words of self-justification. Jesus spoke, forgiveness. The same compassion reflected in his eyes. These last words made such a lasting impression. I believe, and my boys too, Rufus and Alexander became strong in faith and leaders in Jesus' church. So may the last words of Jesus also make a lasting impression on you. The second reading today is from Luke chapter 23, verses 26, 33, and 34. As they led him away, they seized Simon from Cyrene, who was on his way in from the country, and put the cross on him and made him carry it behind Jesus. When they came to the place called the Skull, there they crucified him, along with the criminals, one on his right, the other on his left. Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. The word of God for the people of God.